10 p.m. that night, a snowstorm hit the area, the worst for 35 years. By the following morning, drifts of up to 10 feet deep were blocking the roads. At 11 a.m., Venenzi, concerned that the women might not be equipped for such weather, called at the hotel and learned that they had not returned. By 6 p.m., there had still, seen, still been no word. Venenzi was by then getting alarmed and went to the police to report them missing, but the police did not share his anxiety. Thinking that the women were up to some adventure and sure that they would be taking shelter somewhere, the police were reluctant to organize a full-scale search in the face of such terrible weather conditions. The next morning, Monday, still brought no news of the women. The police still refused to act, so Venenzai mobilized his own search party with his own cousin, the leader of the local Alpine Rescue Squad. He started off on skis soon after 1 p.m. Two hours later, the police joined them, but at 5 p.m., a shop assistant from Muraz informed the police that the two women had, had called there at about 4 p.m. on Saturday, sure that the women would not have set off for the mountains when it was already getting dark. The police called off the search. Casa Galapua Stephen May arrived from London that night. Next morning, Tuesday, the police mounted another search, search this time on a larger scale but found nothing. Searching con continued during the early part of December, as hope for the women faded. Then on Friday the 19th of December, a police helicopter spotted the top of a Peugeot just showing through the snow. The police were soon on the spot to dig it out. The women were not inside, but there were a number of clues available to the police. There was no snow between the tyres and the road surface, indicating that the car had been driven to the spot before the snowstorm had started. It appeared to have been parked at the side of the road quite deliberately. The handbrake was on and the car started easily. Jeanette's driving shoes were on the floor by the front seat. Her Wellington boots, which she kept in the car, were gone. Her tinted driving glasses were on the front seat. Gabriella's woolen scarf was on the back seat. The police now searched the area. Just around the corner from the car, higher up the mountain, was a small cottage, the Casa Gal Opa which was used by shepherds during the summer. It had been closed for the winter on 11 October. The water turned off and the shutters closed. The police found that the shutter on the front door was loose and had been pop propped shut by a heavy gas cylinder. The cottage had clearly been broken into. Inside it was a shambles. A fire had been going in the fireplace and an enormous amount of wood had been burnt, about a quarter of a ton of logs along the some twenty wooden chairs along with some twenty wooden chairs, wine crates, the base of a sofa, the inside shutters from the windows and even some of the panelling from the living room walls. Whomsoever had been there had also eaten. A stack of plates had been taken from the kitchen to the living room and the two of them had been used and two of them had been used, as well as three forks and two glasses. The bathroom basin was full of blackened snow. In front of the house on the balcony was a tablecloth tied to the railings. In the corner of the balcony, someone had lit a fire using plastic seats from deck chairs. As far as the Italian police co was concerned, the mystery was now solved. The women had driven up the mountain that Saturday evening and had been cut off by the snowdrift. They had left their car and broke into the cottage. They had the lit fire, dragged the sofa in front of it, spread a mattress to sleep on and made themselves a meal. The fire and the tablecloth in the balcony had been signals for help. When no one came, they had left on foot and perished in the snow. Their bodies would doubtless become found in the spring. But this explanation raised more questions than, answered, than it answered. Why had the women gone sightseeing when it was getting dark? How could they have had a meal in the cottage when the shepherds had left no food there? Why would they light such a small fire on the balcony as an SOS signal, signal when there was plenty of wood? And why hang out a tablecloth that could be seen from, from the road, not from the air? And how long did the women wait before setting off? The amount of wood burnt suggested a stay of at least a week from but from Sunday morning onwards, the cottage had been snowed in and the women could not have got out.